it is so good to see you. So happy you're here today and I'm really excited because we are having kind of a special, unique Sunday where we're getting to do something a little different than we usually do. So I'm glad you're here. Good thing you're coming today. Um, all right, well, we are gonna worship. We are gonna worship with Father Trevor. Um, I never even knew he could lead worship until we started making these videos. So I'm so happy. So take it away, Father Trevor. Well, good morning, boys and girls. This is Father Trevor, and I am so glad to be able to worship with you today. And this morning, I want you to stand up and let us sing our praises to God because he gives us many reasons to rejoice. So we're going to sing, This is the Day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. you know the reason we can be full of joy most of all is because Jesus loves us and so let's sing Jesus loves me together Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong they So much father trevor i hope that you will lead worship in person for us now that we're back in person so keep that guitar out sir all right well, we're gonna do our liturgy together now so let's get ready to say these wonderful prayers you know we've kind of shortened our liturgy for these videos and i kind of like that because it lets me um I'm trying to memorize all of it. It's not working very well so far, <laughs> but um, I, I know that I've um, talked with some of you kiddos and that you've really memorized this liturgy, so you're doing better than me, so I gotta keep up with you. I always still have to read it. I don't know, maybe I just get nervous or something, but anyway, let's do our liturgy together. We'll try and memorize it. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, 
and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, let's say our thank yous. For our lives which you have created, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus into the world. Lord, we thank you for our families, our friends, and our neighbors. Lord, we thank you for health and for loving care. Lord, we thank you. Help us to love other people this day and every day. Great. Okay, let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Do you guys say amen or amen? I always say amen when we're reading these, but other than that I say amen. What do you say? It doesn't matter. God knows. Okay. <laughs> do you guys know what amen or amen means? This is really cool. This is actually really cool. Have you guys ever seen, like, um, on television or maybe in real life, when a judge puts that, like, little gavel thing down when they, when it's the end, when they've said, like, guilty or not guilty, whatever they've said, they put the gavel down, and that means it's over. There's no more, <laughs> there's no more talking about it. Like, it's done. That's what amen means. It has that, um, it has the uh, meaning that, um, the Lord is now like in charge of it. Like we've given it to him, he's in charge of the world and you're and you're like, it's done. Like, Lord, you've got this. That's cool, right? I like that. Okay, now our confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Amen. Great job. All right, well, let us talk about what is going on around Holy Cross. So, um, yeah, I think probably, probably most of you have heard, have been putting out the word in a lot of places that our in-person services are back for families. Um, I have just been just overwhelmed with how happy I am to see you guys and how happy you guys are to see each other. It has been just really sweet at our family service last week. Everybody just kept clapping. Like <laughs> at the end of the worship, everyone clapped. At the end of the birthdays, everyone was clapping. There's a lot of clapping. We were just so happy to see each other. And that's because the Bible says that we're family. And if you haven't seen your family in a long time, you're happy when you get to see them. So, um, our in-person services are just back on. They're at a new time for families. They're at 1045. Um, that allows us to clean um, before you come in there. And it also allows um, some of the older members of our congregation to be in the space first. So it's kind of like the grocery store. But I've also heard from a lot of families that 1045 is working really well for you. Um, it gives you a little more time to get ready in the morning and you're done right around lunchtime. You can go get some queso or whatever. So um, yes, join us at 1045. If your family is not ready to go out in person, that is no problem. We are still gonna have these online services definitely through Christmas. So um, so just 
sit back and drink your coffee and your jammies and or ship online. So um, those are our services. Um, you probably also know that we're doing these rice bowls. So you can come get a rice bowl at any of our services. We'll have those um, for all the weeks to come. And we will be doing our bowl smash bash sometime before Christmas. So that's when we collect all the donations out of the bowls. Um, we haven't set that date yet. Um, I'm just trying to look at a few things, but we'll be collecting it before Christmas. So fill up those bowls. Um, I got a giant box of purple candles. I have like a bunch of these boxes in my office. Why do I have a bunch of purple candles in my office? Because Advent is coming up. What? Oh my gosh, this year, it's been like the slowest year and the fastest year. In this sense, it seems like it's the fastest year because we're already planning the Advent workshop, y'all. So our Advent wreath making workshop will happen just like it always does because we always have it outside. So it's the perfect COVID event. Um, we will have it outside at both of our campuses on Sunday, November 29th. That is um, the first Sunday of Advent. It's crazy. It's right around the corner. And um, we'll just have individual, we'll have a few changes for COVID. Everybody will just get their own kit with the branches already in it. And we won't share supplies or anything. So you'll get everything you need in your bag, but we can all kind of make them outside together. Um, so all you do is show up at that. You don't need to register. You can either bring your own wreath and from years past and just buy the kit with just the candles and the decorations or if you don't have a wreath you can buy the full kit with the wreath this is a great thing to invite friends to um some people maybe have never celebrated advent before or maybe their church doesn't do advent with the wreath and it's fun um, or maybe you could make a wreath and bring it to a neighbor who's stuck inside i've heard lots of sweet stories about how people reach out with this event so be thinking and praying about who you might bring and um, finally we have a holiday coming up do you know what holiday that is it's this wednesday have you been talking about it at school what is it yes it's veterans day so veterans day is where we celebrate as a country all the brave men and women who serve in our armed forces and so that might be the army the navy the air force or any any of the organizations that help those branches um or or the space force right isn't that the new the new branch <laughs> um so you might have a veteran in your family maybe one of your parents is a veteran or maybe one of your grandparents is a veteran or maybe a friend maybe somebody you know from school so um we are going to say a special prayer for our veterans and their families um right now before we do our giving so let's bow our heads and pray for our veterans Jesus, thank you so much for sending people into this country who are willing to serve selflessly. We pray for your blessing over their families right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for protection over them in their bodies, in their minds, in their hearts. We pray for their children as they are serving too in a way by um, just missing their parents oftentimes or going through the stress of that. We pray for their husbands and their wives, their parents, just all the people that love them as they serve. And we pray that um, as they serve, they would know your love for them and that we as a country would love them too. And we pray that we would honor them and that they would um, just feel appreciated for the sacrifices that they've made. We love them, Lord. We thank you that you love them even more. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you know a veteran this Veterans Day, definitely reach out to them and say a prayer over them. You could sing the blessing song over them. I bet they would love that. Or you could write them a card, send them a picture. Let's um, support our veterans this Wednesday. All right, y'all. Well, Mr. Jake is gonna lead us in our doxology. And we'll remember the words of Jesus. He said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. 
Hey families, let's sing the doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. story and like I said at the beginning we're doing something a little different today um, we are gonna put a tiny little pause on the life of Jesus which actually y'all we're almost at the end of the year we're almost done with talking well we'll never be done <laughs> talking about the life of Jesus but in that chronological way that we've done this year we are almost at the end of our story so that's crazy to me um, I have just loved telling these stories over the year but for today, we're going to take a pause because today is a special day in the life of the church. Um, it is called Orphan Sunday. So why don't you turn to your family now and say what you think an orphan is. Yes, so maybe a lot of you already knew, maybe you've talked about that from church, but an orphan is someone who for lots and lots and lots of reasons doesn't have their parents anymore. So maybe their parents passed away or maybe their parents couldn't take care of them for whatever reason. Um, and this Sunday is a day where the church, the people who love Jesus, take a day and we maybe pray for orphans or do a special outreach or just do something to honor their life and, and try and help take care of them. The Bible talks a lot about orphans because we serve a God who is a father God and he doesn't want to see anybody being an orphan. He says that he is a father to the fatherless so that his love is big enough to make nobody an orphan ever again. Um, that he wants everybody to know him as a father and that um, reaches into our hearts when we are his children, when we are adopted into his family and makes us as Christians want to help and love orphans. So, can you think of a way, I bet you can, can you think of a way that we as a church are loving orphans right now? Yep, rice bowls. All the money from these bowls will go to help feed orphans. So for whatever reason, their parents can't feed them right now. And so Father God's heart is coming through our hands, right? And our bowls and going to help feed these kids. So I'm excited because Rice Bowls, the ministry, makes these really cute and cool videos of actual kids that you guys are helping. So we are going to watch two videos this morning. I think you're gonna love them. The first video introduces, you know, I know I tell you what Rice Bowls does, but this video really shows you what they're doing, who they're helping, these are actual kids, actual orphans that you're feeding, and why it's so important. So enjoy this video and we'll come back at the end and talk about it some more. This is Violet and her husband, Abraham, and these are the children they call their own. Before Violet and Abraham took them in, many were abandoned, abused, and malnourished, fighting for survival on the streets. Violet saw something special in them. They had so much potential, but if she and her husband didn't help, the children might not make it. So she took them in and loved them like they've never been loved before. And the children began to grow and get stronger. As they grew, so did their appetites. Which created a big problem. 
to make matters worse, when it rained, raw sewage flooded the rooms where the children slept. They needed to move, but all their money was going towards food. Fortunately, Rice Bowls partners with loving grassroots children's homes around the world to cover 100% of their food budgets. Rice Bowls started over 35 years ago using a plastic piggy bank in the shape of a bowl of rice to fight world hunger. Today, we have even more bite-sized opportunities for people like you to partner with children's homes to ensure thousands of orphaned children enjoy delicious, locally sourced meals every single day. By removing the financial burden on these homes, you enable them to focus on loving, teaching, protecting, and providing for the children in their care. Every one of the kids we serve is a hero who has already overcome so much. They have the potential to make a real difference in the world. Let's give them a boost. Wasn't that beautiful? I thought you guys would like that. So we are gonna watch one more video and this is, I just, I love this video. I was watching it yesterday and just like crying because it was so beautiful. Um, and the reason I think this video is beautiful and the reason I wanted you to see it is because I wanted to show you how, um, and the cool thing about this video is it's the action, it's a true story. And the, the child that it's about, you actually see him. So I, I thought that was so cool. It's a, it's a real story. Um, the reason I wanted you to see it is because I wanted you to see how God uses our offerings. You know, maybe they're not that much. Maybe, maybe you raise $10. Maybe that doesn't seem like a lot, but when we add it together and when God, the Father God, shows his Father's heart through our little gifts, I wanted you to see how it has these bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger effects. So yes, you are feeding an orphan and their tummy is full of yummy food and that is amazing but it also has these other effects in their life it lasts even longer it affects how they are when they're a big kid and a teenager and a grown-up and then it affects what they do in the world that affects other kids and teenagers and grown-ups so your tiny little rice bowl has this really big effect and I just wanted you to see what that looked like in one life of one little boy. So let's watch this together. Now that I'm older, I can look back and see the moments that changed my life forever. But when I was little, I had no idea. My name is Lazaro. I was born in the Barrios of Honduras. It wasn't long until my home became too unsafe. I had to go. I still don't know how, but at five years old, I learned to survive on the streets all by myself. I was so alone. Then, one day, a beautiful lady saw me on the streets. It was the first lady. You know, the wife of the president. She wanted to help me. Was I dreaming? No, amigo, this was no dream. She let me have everything my heart desired. I lived for four months at the presidential palace while she tried to adopt me. I thought this is my big break. But it didn't work out that way. 
She knew I had no family to return to, but she had heard about the best children's home in the country. It was far from the city, and that's where I was headed. The day I arrived at the children's home, I knew what I'd find. Disappointment. But instead, I found love. I'd never really had home-cooked meals. But every day, they prepared the most delicious food for me. And even as a child, I could tell they cared for me like I was their own. I felt the pain in my heart slowly fading away. Now, not everything I had to do was easy. But they did their best to teach me hard work and responsibility. Eventually, I found some work I really liked. The farm. At first, I didn't know what I was doing, but I remember the day one of the farmers looked at me and said, Que bueno. And I knew I was made for this. Fast forward about a decade. I still love the farm. Unfortunately, there was still something I didn't enjoy. But I had a home, and life was good. But on my 18th birthday, I got an unpleasant surprise. The government told me I was too old to stay at the home. Was I going to be thrown back on the streets? No, amigo. The children's home helped me to find a job. <coughs> I was going to be working with prize-winning show horses. But it wasn't the glamorous job I expected. I had to do a lot of unpleasant things. After 18 months of manual labor and seeing my friends pursue their dreams, I realized I wanted to do something more with my life. I learned at the children's home that to reach our potential, we often have to face difficult challenges. I decided I had to go back to school and my true family was there for me again. They helped me find a place to live and let me work a morning shift on the farm so I could prepare for university on nights and weekends. My goal is to one day become an agricultural engineer so that I can make a real difference in my community through farming. So many times in my life, I felt hopeless like I'd lost my sense of belonging. And while I know troubles will come again, gracias a Dios, I now know I will always have a home. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Did you guys cry? Oh my goodness, I just think it's just so beautiful and I love that we get to see Lazaro and that um, 
we get to see what his dreams are and how his dreams are coming true because of Father God's love for him and using these crazy little bowls with all our little bits and pieces of money in it. So I hope that really encouraged you in a couple ways. I hope that it encouraged you to do your rice bowls. Um, and even more, I hope that it encouraged you to know that whenever we give something to the Lord, that um, he can multiply it. Just like in the story about how the little boy shared his lunch with Jesus, his loaves and his fishes, that God's power takes our little teeny offerings. Maybe we feel like we can't do that much in all areas of our life. Maybe as a parent or as a pastor or as a wife or as a child, a student, whatever. Um, maybe we feel like we're not making that big of a difference, but it's not about that. We offer what we can and then God's love like blows it up and makes it bigger than, than we ever could have thought of, right? So I just wanna encourage all of us that, especially during this hard time, to give what we've got. Give what we've got, share our loaves and fishes, share our 10 bucks in our rice bowl, and then watch what God does with that because of his great power and his great love. So, I hope you enjoyed today. I hope that you're all excited to fill up your rice bowls. And we're gonna sing our blessing song today over all of the orphans in this world. And remember, the Bible says that just like our, our offerings are powerful, our prayers are powerful. It says that the prayers of the righteous, that's us who love Jesus, are powerful that they affect change. So when we are blessing others, like today we're gonna to bless orphans, that actually means something in the world. It's not just a pretty little song. It actually means something in the world and it makes things better. So let's get singing. We better start blessing if it's so powerful. All right, are you ready? Let's hold up our hands. That means we're blessing anybody who's an orphan, okay? So let's sing it together. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine on you. May the Lord be gracious with the light of his countenance and bring you peace. Awesome, give me a high five. Good job, good blessing. All right, y'all, well, um, We've got a family discipleship activity on the blog, in the chat box. This is really cute. Rice Bowls um, Ministry makes these um, cute little uh, like scripture cards that you can print out and put up around your house um, so that you can be praying for the kids that are going to receive the food from your bowl. So um, that's what that discipleship activity is. You can click on that and print them out. And I will see you next week, either online or in person at 1045 at either of our campuses. So until then, I love you. God loves you way even more. And I will see you soon. Bye.